Hi, my name's James Bowers. I'm from Ethical Brands. And today I want to talk to you about what we've been doing over the past few weeks. My role on the team was to project manage the initial stages of the project and to style the components once they were developed. So at the beginning of the project, we decided to use Notion to produce a Kanban board, which we could use to divide the tasks up and allocate them across the team. We also found it quite useful as a general notepad in terms of storing things like our repos, our database links, and things like that. We also used the features within it to establish what people's strengths were, um, to define the roles and responsibilities on the team, as well as to establish a use case and the user stories that kind of drive the functionality of the app. So what are we actually building? Well, we wanted to make an app which can tell the user how ethical a brand is in as little time as possible. We also wanted to be a conduit for social change and a little bit more on that in a bit. So there are some websites around. They tend to be catering more for fashion brands and cosmetic brands, uh, but there's currently no app on the market which caters for all sectors and gives you an overview of how ethical a brand is. And as consumers come more informed about social issues such as labor exploitation and, you know, who knows, perhaps even climate change now that it's uh, affecting us. Um, we, we do believe that there's a real appetite in the market to be able to find out whether brands share our values. And recent trends such as green banking have shown that consumers are prepared to invest their money elsewhere if brands don't share their values. This is a powerful form of campaigning. So I'm going to hand over to you now to Tom, who's going to talk about the front end technologies and give you a little demonstration of our app. When you first load up our app, this is the page you're brought to. It's a desktop view. However, during the design phase, we opted to go for a mobile first approach as we feel like that was more appropriate for what we were building. We wanted a quick and easy search engine where people could make multiple searches and a use case perhaps where someone's shopping and they're about to make a purchase, but they want to quickly see a brand's ethical standpoint. So if I replicate what a user would do and start typing into the search input, you can see as you start typing, you're prompted with a list of brands within our database. So if I search the Coca-Cola company, for example, it takes you to the results page for that specific brand. And there's a brief overview at the top here about ownership, sector, and then below that there are five data points that support this overall score at the top. We have animals or animal testing, environment, labour, philanthropy, and there's also a recent article here so you can choose to read more about that company if you wish. So if I go back to the search and just make another one. Jack Wolfskin, you can see they score slightly better and they obviously don't provide information for this philanthropy and there's a brief section on the home page which references about companies who don't display information, how you should be cautious of that and do your own due diligence as a consumer. And also we have a list of references here that we collected from the research phase to give some credit and also validate the information in our app. So the main technologies we used for the front end were React, CSS and JSX and we chose to do this from quite an early stage in the project as we just covered React on the front end module and me and James who were doing the front end we were comfortable using these so that's why we chose that. We also added React Router to add some user navigation but maintain a single page application and throughout the course of the project we added a handful of tests including some snapshot tests with Jest to ensure components rendered correctly and made sure everything looked how we wanted it to look. So moving into VS Code now to showcase how our search component works. Initially we have an Axios request here which retrieves all of the brand names and sets that to set all brand names. Then within our search component, this is initialized on the first render with a use effect hook here. And then on input change, on line 40 here, handle input change function is filtering over all of those brand names and returning only the ones that include that user input. This is then 
conditionally rendered further down here and it maps over that filtered list of brands and returns everything that matches the user input and then after that when a user chooses a brand there's a double setter here which sets the input to what they clicked and also collapses the list of brands then when the search button is pressed that speaks to a second request file here which makes another Axios request and appends whatever the user has typed to the end of the URL. That then returns all of these data points from our database which nicely leads on to the next section of the presentation where I'll hand over to Ben and Mustafa to talk a bit more about the backend technologies. Hi, I'm Ben and I've been working on the back end of the Ethical Brands app along with Mustafa. So early in the planning stage of the project, we realised that we're going to need to compile all our own data and we want some flexibility over the way that we store the data. Because of this, we use the non-relational database MongoDB. Now one of the best things about MongoDB is that we can run a cluster using the Atlas service and then we could deploy a remote database from that that each of the development team would have access to. And we could make changes too before we even established any endpoints. Now we used Express and Node.js to build and run the app. We used Cause to enable cross-origin resource sharing, Nodemon to automatically watch for any changes and restart the app, and .env to access the MongoDB URI that we used to connect to the remote database as it contains sensitive information. Now we used MongoDB Compass GUI to input our own data manually, and I'll just run you through that now. As you can see, we've got the Ethical Brands database and within that we've got the brands collection and within that we've got the different brands or documents. <clears throat> and as you can see, we've got nested objects within that. Within those nested objects, we've got nested arrays. And again, one of the reasons we've done this was just to make it more straightforward when the front end team would manipulate the data just because there was so much data that we gathered. I'll just run you through the backend repo. Now to connect to the database, we exported two functions, the connect to server and get DB. The connect to server used Mongo client, which is some out of the box functionality when you install MongoDB, to connect to the database, which again uses our MongoDB URI, which I touched on earlier. Alice will connect to the ethical brands database and then return the DB connection. Index.js was then pointed to our app. So if there was no error, the app would listen on pot 3000 and then get DB function will be exported as DB. Now, when we were developing the backend, we wanted to establish as many endpoints as possible. This was just so if any additional features were added on the front end, the endpoints would already be available and established on the back end. So I'll just hand over to Mustafa to talk about the endpoints. Hello there. My name is Mustafa Abdullahi. I am part of Ethical Brands. Um, my role in the team was doing the backend with Ben. As Ben mentioned already, um, we did input our data manually through MongoDB. After we did that, I created routes and controllers. We used the REST commands like get, patch, and delete. Um, we wanted to get all brands when users input their data in the search bar. Uh, for example, get all brands and also by category and by name. Um, we use patched to update um, an object. And finally, we use delete to remove um, any records from the database, um, whether that's by ID or by all brands. For our agile software developments, we used a number of tools such as Google Meet, Slack, Notion and Figma. We use Notion as a task log and we used Google Meet and Slack to carry our regular stand-ups and share real-time updates. So we believe that in ethical brands, we've created a viable product. There were some extra features that we would have implemented uh, if we had the time. So things like adding searching for brands by category 
or sector, perhaps it's a clothing brand, perhaps it's a cosmetic brand, perhaps it's a food brand, etc. Um, we'd also like to let users vote on a brand. Um, but also there were some more obvious things like visual and UI improvements. So it'd be nice to change the primary color of the app or the background, depending on what kind of sector the company that they're viewing belongs to. Uh, but I think the most obvious one is that we've created an app that can render uh, information in a user-friendly way from a JSON format. So we would like to uh, enhance that and create an API that can kind of comb the web and get that information for us so that the data isn't static and that there isn't so much onus on us to keep updating it. Longer term as well, it would be really nice to integrate this with something like the Open Barcode API, and that would enable barcode scanning via the app. And that really feeds into our original aim, which is to make the app as quick to use as possible. So we want people to use it as at the point of sale. So we'd like to thank everyone who's helped us on this project, all the tutors from Manchester Codes. Um, I want to thank you as well for watching. And I'd like to take this moment to open up the floor for questions. Thank you.